show you what we got going on tonight just had a customer show up they went ahead and purchased all the material themselves which is completely fine that kind of makes things easier for me too as long as they get good quality material because then I don't have to spend eight thousand dollars on this ridiculously priced fuel to drive into Salt Lake and pick it up so that's one thing that's gonna save him a little bit of money so I'm good with that I completely understand so what we've got is this is for the guy that you've seen on a couple of the other videos that has the airboat he wants us to build a new dog box that'll slide underneath the motor base and this right here is the size that he wants it built which is 27 by 32 what we're gonna do we've got two pieces here and I believe one of them we'll take the eight foot one I think there's an eight foot and a nine foot piece and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the eight foot piece and we're gonna break a u-shape basically so we're gonna break the short side the long side and the short side and then we'll be able to fit that up this panel here will have the dog door on it it's just gonna be very similar to the pig box that I built so it'll have some piano hinge where I do the door I'm gonna tack weld some flat bar on the inside so that the door doesn't swing in so that's the plan so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get our measurements and then we'll be able to just start fitting things it's not gonna have a bottom on it because he wants to be able to wash it out you know the dog gets all muddy when they're out duck hunting and then gets in this he wants to be able to come home and wash the mud out and stuff and there's there's like a foam padded floor on the bottom that the dog will be able to lay on so it'll just work out better for him so it's not going to have a bottom so it'll be four sides the top and then we're going to do some sort of a rack system on the top where he can put some decoys and stuff so anyway that's the plan so we're going to roll right into figuring out our measurements to break this first piece and we'll go from there okay so we're 27 by 32 and a half okay so <clears throat> there's some things you need to know when you break things and for those of you who don't know what I mean by break things in the fabrication world of things when you break something it means you take a piece of flat metal and you bend it that's called a break and so we've got a press break over there we're going to use our press break so that we can bend this u-shaped piece so that'll save us time welding these two joints when you break things we'll take this first measurement and it'll be exact that'll be exactly where we want our mark to be but to figure out this next one where where we have okay we've got a measurement here and then i pulled this measurement to be able to figure out how far the distance is from this corner to this corner there's some things that you have to remember and you also got to remember we want an open corner so that we can TIG weld this up when you break joints you have to remember that the measurement grows the thickness of the material so I'm gonna break this piece and then from this mark to this mark it's gonna grow whatever the thickness of the material is this should make more sense as we as we get going but what I'm gonna do to start is I'm gonna pull this measurement which is 27 and we'll go ahead and get this this laid out first so I'm gonna burn a foot here Okay, so we're gonna run this one wild. So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna leave this end long, and then we'll cut it at the end. That'll just make things easier for us. So let's go over and let's start breaking this.
Okay, so I want to get my knife. This, this piece here is called your knife. You want to get it right on your mark. Okay, and then... We want to check square. I think I went a little bit past, luckily. be able to fix that. That's the only thing I don't like about this machine is you can't feather the hydraulics on it. It's really jerky. So now what I'm going to do is I want to double check my measurements. So I'm going to pull the tape here and I'm going to make sure that the measurement from here to this mark is what we want. Okay so we're right on there. Now we're going to take and stick this other end in. So on this one, we want to stay just inside of that line. Because if we don't, this is what I was talking about, about the measurement growing. If we don't hug the inside of the line, then our measurement's going to grow. Because there is a little bit of a radius when you break something. And when you have that radius, it's going to push your measurement out or, or it's going to make it longer. So we're going to stay on the inside of our mark here. But we're going to try. Okay, so we're just inside there. Okay, I feel good about that. So now I just gotta try not to over break it. Which I think I did. Because you can't feather this machine, so. Luckily I can bend it back. See it's right on 32 and a half. So that's exactly what you want. So that piece is gonna be ready to fit. The next thing we wanna do, I'll probably cut this piece. So I'll pull my measurement there. It's gonna be right on, so 27. So now if I measure here, mark 27 on both sides, make my mark. All right. Now we're gonna take this over and shear it. For super cool tool, we're talking iron workers. Iron workers are one of those tools that's probably more, it's definitely more industrial. Typically the shops that do more industrial work usually always have an iron worker. The cool thing about having an iron worker is they're very versatile. So typically iron workers will have multiple tools or multiple stations on them that you can do a lot of different fabrication things on. For example, so right here, we've got a shear. Pretty much every iron worker is gonna have some sort of a table or a chart on it that will tell you how thick it will shear. So this shear, it gives you one by six, three quarter by eight, half by 12, and quarter by 24 so it'll shear a 24 inch wide piece of quarter inch plate that's pretty good this particular iron worker if you look right here it's a 6509 on the model that probably means it's a 65 ton machine so that's probably why the model is a 6509 that's one thing that you want to remember if you look at your chart it will tell you what the capacity of the machine is you don't want to shear something or punch something or bend something on your iron worker if it's not rated for that because you'll end up damaging something on the machine. The blade on the machine, you'll blow up a punch on the machine, you could fry the pump, you could do a lot of damage to the machine if you don't stay within the capacity of the machine. So 
You just want to keep in mind that if you are going to use an iron worker, read the chart, see what the machine's capacity and capabilities are, and stick with that. So we've already talked about our shear. Now let's move up to our brake. So we've got a press brake here. And this, this is our press brake. You just saw me use the press brake. Obviously it's for bending things. And it'll tell you what the capacity of the brake is. This, this brake goes with this machine, but you can see on a 12 inch brake, it's got a 40 tonnage capacity. 18 inch brake, the tonnage capacity is 35 and 24 inch brake, it's 30 tons. So the tonnage capacity goes down the wider the brake is because it requires more power to bend something wider. Okay, so basically you've got a 30 ton brake because this is a 24 inch brake. So it's 24 inches wide, so the capacity is 30 tons. But then it will also tell you what the capacity, so a quarter inch capacity with standard dies. You could probably upgrade the dies to a different harder type of steel and then you'd be able to do more. Okay, so that's, that's your press brake. It saves a lot of time because in a lot of scenarios, if you can break something with a 90 or a U-shape or whatever, where normally you might have to weld two joints to make a U-shape, you can just hurry up and bend it and then weld that. Instead of taking flat bar and cutting three pieces and having to do two welds and then you take it over and it's gotta cool because it's so hot you can't touch it. Then you put it on the trailer and you tack it up and then you do another two welds. This is really a game changer for fabrication because you're able to bend a U-shaped pocket. You take that piece, it's nice and cool. You go over, you put it on the trailer, you tack it up, you weld two joints and you're done. So it's a big time saver in a lot of ways. The next thing we should talk about that is a huge game changer on an iron worker is the punch capabilities. Okay, so one of the biggest things with iron workers is the punch. What we have here, they usually all have a wrench. So I'm just gonna show you guys. Every iron worker is just a little bit different as far as how the punches work and what the design of them is. So if you order punches for an iron worker, obviously, you know, it's like, it's like ordering a water pump for a car. They're all gonna be different. So you need to know the manufacturer and that sort of thing. But what, what is the same with all punches on all iron workers is you have a die and you have a punch. And you can get a set that'll have every size in 16th inch increments from, I believe the smallest you can get is 5 sixteenths, And they can go all the way up to, I've seen inch and a quarter sometimes. I think maybe I've even seen an inch and a half punch. Okay, but again, the other thing you need to worry about on those is capacity. If I take this quarter inch punch and I try to punch a hole on half inch plate or three quarter inch plate, it's gonna blow up in my face. And I, and I literally mean blow up in your face. It will shatter and it will send shrapnel blowing up all over the shop. And so it can be really dangerous if you're not careful and if you don't understand what the capabilities of the machine and of the equipment are. A good rule of thumb with iron workers is you can only punch a hole with the thickness of the same size punch you're using. So if I'm using a quarter inch punch, I can only punch up to a quarter inch thick steel. So if I have a half inch punch, I can punch half inch steel, but I can't punch five eighths steel. I can punch three eighths, I can punch quarter. So that's a good rule of thumb in most cases, unless the iron worker says otherwise, but every iron worker I've ever ran, and I've ran quite a few of them, the rule of thumb is you don't wanna punch any size of material larger than the size of punch you're using, okay? You can see where this would be really useful because drilling holes is just a time burner. It takes time, it costs more money because you've got more materials, you gotta buy drill bits and all that stuff. And if I can take and punch a hole that is within spec, it's a nice clean hole, obviously you wanna go that route. So if you step over here, obviously, I've got a full set here. I can punch anywhere from a quarter inch hole to an inch and three sixteenths 
that really is a game changer. I can punch holes in a matter of seconds where it's gonna take minutes or even longer if I have to drill them. In a lot of cases, you have to drill them because drilling is more precise. If all you're needing is just a regular bolt hole, then these are gonna work just fine. So in most cases, a punch is gonna work great. Okay, so moving on. Okay, so now we've talked about our punch, we've talked about our shear, we've talked about our brake, and every iron worker is a little bit different. Here's another one of the cool things about this type of iron worker. Now there's things I like about this iron worker, there's things I don't like. One of the things I don't like is you can't feather the hydraulics. This company right here, Edwards Company, they make an iron worker that is it is awesome. You can feather the hydraulics just a teeny tiny bit at a time. So you're able to be way more precise. It's got a lot of cool features to it. They are just top notch quality. Scotchman has a really good name. This iron worker here is, it's old. And it's been put through the ringer. It's, it's a good machine. It's been good for me, but it, it is definitely a little tired in a lot of ways. But here's one of the cool things about the Scotchman. Because of the design of this machine, where you have this arm that goes up and down, you're able to utilize this surface right here as the driving force to operate other tools, okay? So right here, I've got a pipe coping tool, and you can get this type of pipe coping tool for any size of pipe from half inch clear up to, I want to say, two and a half inch. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a look here at how this arm on this machine is so useful. Okay, so we got our pipe coping tool here, and I'm going to turn the machine on. It's probably going to be kind of loud. You're not going to hear a lot about what I'm saying, probably. But I'm just going to show you how useful this is. Okay, so this piece here, this is something I built for my coping tool. This arm is going to drive the pipe coper. So I've got a piece of two inch pipe here, schedule 40. I'm going to set it in my coper. And that gives me a perfect cope, okay? Okay, so if I roll it over, and then I can line my marks up. There's marks on this tool right here so that I get it square. That gives me a perfect cope. If you don't understand what, what coping pipe is, then I'm able to take two pieces of pipe and I can make a T-joint like this. See how tight that joint is. When you have the equipment to do something like this versus having to lay that out with a pipe wrap and cut it with a torch. This is way faster, it's way cleaner, the joint's perfect, so there's a lot of benefits to it. Okay, so that's our pipe coulter. It spits out a little cube on there, and these love, these love to stick in your boots. Okay, so that's the main stuff that I use on my iron worker, but there are also other attachments that you can get and there's if you get online there's a list a mile long of stuff you can get for these there's round bar shears that'll sit in here that you can shear round bar with i actually have the angle shear right here um there's a nipper here so that's our iron worker extremely useful tool uh i would say that one of the downfalls is going to be the price this is one of those pieces of equipment that not not everybody's going to have one of these in their garage you know the guys that are more hobbyist welders they're probably not going to have this in their garage because it's such a huge investment big price tag attached to it but for those you know medium sized large sized fab shops you're going to want an iron worker because they're a time saver they're it's a huge tool for fabrication the majority of my equipment is not brand new. Um, this one's this one's pretty old, and quite frankly, it's pretty hammered. But for now, it's it's doing me just fine, and it's making me money. So we'll continue to use it. Um, so that's going to be it for our iron worker. So let's get back to the project. 
what's going on guys it is the next day we are going to start getting this fit up so i'm going to grab a grinder i'm going to start cleaning up these edges hit all those with a flap disc get it nice and clean that's one thing with aluminum you want to make sure it's nice and clean if you don't you will fight it so i'm going to go ahead and clean all these up i got an edge here that's a little rough looking i'm going to fix that up so we got a little fitting, a little prep work, and a little tacking to do. Let's get after it. You can see we're using our pipe clamps here to clamp this up in two directions so that we can get our joint right where we want it. Uh, why don't you come hold this? That's how it's supposed to go. I'm not sure what the hell. Okay, so we've got our box all tacked up here. Man, I was fighting some of this stuff like crazy. I don't know if it's from the adhesive on those joints, but like this, looks like dog crap. I don't know what it was doing. The arc would start jumping and wandering, and then I'd have some that would look just fine. So I don't know. I don't know what was going on. I guess we'll see how it welds. Once I get going, it's fine. But it's it's almost like it's gotta burn that crap out first before it'll start running right. So this may be a real treat to weld up, but we'll see how it goes. We're not gonna put you guys through the agony of watching this whole thing because it's gonna take quite a while. So we're gonna go into warp mode and weld it out. Okay, so here's what we got now. Customer wants to put some sort of insulation 
in these and then we'll have some brackets that we can put on the bottom but it's they're just brackets to hold insulation in so we'll stitch weld these in just put a couple stitches on them and then he'll be able to slide his insulation in and then we'll mount the bottom ones after that's how we're going to do the top one On this left side, I'm gonna have to do it left-handed because I can't get, it's just really hard to get your, your rod in there while you're running your torch and get a good angle. And now I got this in there, so I'm gonna try and run it left-handed. This is why it's good to practice both. There are certain situations you run into where you may have to use it, so. I shouldn't say may, you will have to use it. I'm gonna do the same thing, but I gotta do it to the bottom. So we got one down. Now we gotta do the other three sides. Same process. All right guys, here's what I got. Got these stitch welded in here. You can see there was a little bit of movement. Aluminum's tough, when it heats up it wants to move. But I got them as tight as I could. So he's gonna stick insulation in these grooves and then on the bottom we'll probably rivet the bottom ones on because he wants to powder coat it. The insulation brackets are in. Now I think we're ready to take the box and we're going to flip it over so it's right side up. We'll figure out where the door goes, lay it out, and then we'll be ready to plasma cut it. So that's the next step. Let's get after it. Okay, probably gonna be the last update of the night. Went ahead and got these all tacked in here. Just some flat bar around the doggy door so that when the door closes, it's not gonna swing through. So that's done. So we should be ready to mount the door now. I'm gonna flip it over and give you guys a look. Okay, so we got our lip around the whole thing. He probably doesn't want freedom fabrication right there. Oh well, it's getting powder coated. Okay, so we should be ready to mount the door. 
I'm gonna have to figure out the hinge situation because of this. That was something I didn't think about. I may have to cut the hinge to this measurement here. So that's probably gonna wrap it up for tonight. We'll see you guys tomorrow. All right, so we're back out here today. There's been a development. I welded these lip pieces in here and I went clear into the back side here and that's created an issue with the piano hinge because I want the door to close flush and I also need to mount this to the back side. I could trim the hinge down but even if I trim the hinge down it's going to stick out further on this end than it is this end because I'll have the thickness of the hinge on this end but not this end and then it will taper this way. I don't want to do that so I'm going to cut these little pieces out and then I'll re-weld. I'll just put another stitch on the inside here on both places. That way when the door shut the hinge sits back where it needs to so that the whole thing is flush. So I'm going to hurry and cut these and then add a stitch weld on the inside to the end there and I'm going to round the corners right here with a grinder to avoid the dog getting scraped on there. So we're going to do that right now and we'll go from there. Okay, so got that all trimmed. I'm gonna take my piano hinge here. I'm gonna get this side mounted to the box and then I will get the door put on. I'm gonna mount this first and then I'm gonna stand it up and I wanna check the door one more time. If I don't like the door, well, I'll show you guys. There's some things that I don't like and I may end up cutting a new door. I'll show you guys why, but. Okay, so we want to run our rivets through this way so that the flat side is on the outside. So you want to make sure to get that burr off so that the rivet sits flat. Okay, give you guys an update. The door is on. We've got it riveted on. Opens good. Closes good. So now we're just waiting on him to get the latch. He was going to go buy the latch that he liked. And then we'll just rivet that on. So that part's done. I've started cutting out parts for the top rack. He's gonna put decoys in here. I'm trying to get this all laid out. I've got two pieces here. This is how the angle's gonna mount on there. This is pretty thin stuff. So we'll see how that goes. I would like to be able to tack this whole thing up and then even weld it out and then get it on top of there and just weld the bases on. So that's my hope. Um, but I think we're gonna be short on material. He's the one figuring out the material on that So I'm just using what he brings me. I'm gonna see if I can't get this tacked up and I'll just start fitting everything Once I get the whole thing tacked up I do want to test it out and then I'll weld the whole thing out So for all the fitting I'm just gonna put you guys in warp mode and we'll get it all fit up tacked up And then we'll bring you guys back when we get ready to weld that out. So let's go to that point.
All right, guys, here's where we're at. So I got this rack set up here. It's not welded on yet. We're gonna get it, we'll get it centered on here. But you can see, got it welded out, cleaned up. So the rack itself is built and welded out. So now we just need to center it up, go ahead and weld these out. Then the only thing that will be left is we'll rivet the latch on and then I think he's got some other stuff he wants to do inside but we can't do that until he brings the insulation over so we're gonna hurry up and get this top welded on and then I think I'm gonna call it a night so let's let's get that done guys Got this all welded on put some pretty heavy passes on these corners want them to be nice and strong so I think that parts turned out pretty good once I got the welder dialed in I do have it clamped to the table because after I got this fit where I wanted it to, it was kind of tweaked a little bit. So once I tacked it down and started welding it, it pulled the box. And so I'm going to let it cool with the clamps, clamping it down to the table. Usually once it cools, it'll relax to the position that you want it to if you clamp it down while it's hot and let it cool in that position. So we'll see what happens. but. I think that's gonna wrap it up for tonight. There's not a whole lot of work left on this one, I don't think. Sometimes the customer will just kinda go on the fly. If he decides he wants something else, then we just add to it, so. Pretty much all we've got left to do is put the latch on, and then whatever he decides to do with the uh, channel on the bottom that holds the insulation, so. We'll, we'll see what happens, but that's what we got done for now. So we'll get back to you tomorrow when we uh, continue on the box. All right, guys, we're back out here today, and we do have our hasp or latch, whatever you want to call it. And so this is really all we have left to get done on this before it is complete. We are going to help the customer put the insulation up inside and attach the bottom C-channel but we're not sure on how he wants to do that yet. And that's, that's really all that needs to be done before this goes to powder coat. So we're basically done with this project other than our latch here and then finishing up the inside with the insulation. We're gonna get the latch put on and I'll give you guys a look at how I do that. And then once that's done, we'll go over everything again real quick and We'll go from there. Okay, so it comes with screws. Looks like they're powder coated. The latch itself is powder coated. Whoops. But he's gonna go get the whole thing powder coated anyway. And we wanna make sure the powder coat matches on everything. So we're gonna go ahead and get this on now. And I don't think we're gonna use the screws. We're gonna rivet the hasp on. That's what we did on the last one. 
and it seemed to work really well it was nice and tight there was no slop in it so we're gonna try it on this one as well it is a little tricky getting the rivet gun in there but I think we can make it work so let's see what we can do okay so the first thing I want to do is I want to mark center of our door I'm gonna actually just take make a mark I'll make a matching mark on the door here so the way I like to do it really it doesn't matter which piece you start with you want to make sure that this piece will clear so what I mean by that is if I'm gonna mount that here if I get it too close to this door it's gonna rub when I go to open it so you want to make sure that you hold it back like a sixteenth or an eighth or whatever the other good thing is with that flat bar there that's gonna give it some added strength so my drill bits walking just a little bit on me so I'm gonna take a center punch <laughs> One way to knock the burrs off the inside after you drill the hole, just use one of these countersink bits. That knocks them off real quick. Does a good job. Okay, so that one's ready to mount. These are the rivets that I was using on mounting the door and the hinge. And they are 3 16ths by quarter. And so what that means is you got 3 16ths on the diameter. And these type of rivets are used for riveting up to a quarter inch thick of material if you're riveting in thicker material you need to get longer rivets or they're not gonna they're not gonna mount whatever you're attaching properly so we've got some longer rivets we're gonna grab those and we're gonna use those for this because we've got two layers here so we got a quarter inch plus an eighth inch so we're we're basically running three eighths of an inch there so I'm gonna grab those longer rivets. All right, so these ones are 3 16 by half. You gotta remember you're going through the you're going through the latch too, so you gotta you gotta make sure that you have a long enough rivet that can go through all these layers and still attach it properly. All right, so I've got one of these diamonds that's right in the way, and it's causing the latch to sit crooked. I don't like that, so I'm gonna buff that off so that it can sit flat. And we may have to do the same thing on the door, depending on how it sits on there. I'm going to cheat here and I'm going to bend this open a little bit so I can get it riveted on. So that half's done. Okay, so on this, you can see the holes are slotted. So where the holes are slotted, what I like to do is I like my holes to be as far to this end as possible so that when I do mount this, you know, as you open it and close it over and over and over, I personally was thinking that it's probably going to get to the point where it's going to start sucking this over and it's not going to be as tight as when you first mounted it. So I want it to mount right up against the slot. And I want that to be as far as it'll ever be able to travel. So if that's as far as it'll be able to travel, once it hits that point, it'll always stay tight. So what I like to do is I'll take a mark with my Sharpie and I actually will move my mark about an eighth of an inch that way that's where I want these to mount because you could put some tension on this it's not gonna hurt anything and there's actually some flex in this little lip right here so you want it to be tight you don't want it to be loose and rattling around when he's riding out there so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and lay this out where it needs to go and then we're gonna move it an eighth of an inch 
in so that it's tight. Okay, and that's, that's going to sit pretty flat because it's sitting right where it needs to on top of the diamond plate. So we, we aren't going to have to buff those off. It sits right on top of them evenly. It's, split, it's splitting this row right here. So that'll be okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take I'm going to take my center pop, my center punch, and I'm going to make my marks about an eighth of an inch this way, and that's where I'm going to drill my holes. They need to be a pretty good divot. So obviously this is one layer, so we're going to go back to our quarter inch rivets. We're going to use those to mount our hasp. That should get us because we're an eighth of an inch, plus this is only like a sixteenth, so we should be good there. You want to pay attention to make sure they don't walk on you. We'll rivet these on. Okay, and then you can always look on the back here and look at your rivet and make sure that you've got enough sticking out that it's going to stay attached and it looks good. You always want to make sure you get your rivet seated all the way to the bottom. Okay, there's quite a bit of tension on that. One thing you can do, so that may be a little bit heavy. I don't know. Maybe not. One thing you can do is you can massage this little latch a little bit. When I say massage, just tweak it out just a hair. When you do that, that'll make the tension just a little bit less. But that's good. That's going to hold the dog in there. If he wants to put a clip through this or something like that. Okay, so there's our latch. You can see the brackets up top. That's all that's going to be in the bottom. Same thing. Pretty happy with how that turned out okay so as far as cleanup goes I think I've I think I've cleaned pretty much everything up I may have a couple spots I might have to hit there but for the most part that's that's it on this one he'll get it powder coated and I'll try to get some pictures after he gets it done so that we can put it on one of the next videos but just so you guys can see the finished product it'll be nice for his dog and it'll be nice to be able to put decoys on the top there so one thing that I was talking to this customer about was how much he likes custom work custom work is definitely something that I think you know obviously it caters more to the customer so if the customer is willing to pay the price for custom work I feel like typically the customer is more happy because this works exactly for his specific situation and he was able to change some things on the fly it kind of morphed into this which is fine he's paying me for my time and he's one of those customers that he understands that for custom work you're gonna pay for custom work I gave him a quote for how long I thought it would take I was pretty close I obviously I was a little off because when we first started talking about it there was a lot of details that he didn't share with me about what he wanted and that's okay because he knows that he's paying me for my time and I told him in the beginning this is how many hours I think it's gonna take so that's what you can expect to pay he brought me the material so I didn't have to charge him for material other than things like rivets there is one piece of diamond plate that he was short and I actually have a piece that's gonna work for him so I will charge him for the you know the consumables and if he does use any of my material I'm gonna to have to charge him for that because that comes out of my pocket as long as you've got a customer that understands that custom work is typically more expensive and so they're gonna to have to pay for that I'm completely fine with him adding things to it because he understands that as he adds things to it it's gonna take me longer and then obviously his price is gonna go up you know you can't come in here and say well, you had me build you a part 
that's ten times more complex than the part I initially told you I would build you and it's gonna cost the same price it doesn't work that way luckily this customer knows that so it shouldn't be an issue he likes being able to have a product that is exactly what he wants and fits for his situation so anyway that's just another one of those business things i wanted to throw out with you guys drop a comment if you like that or not uh it seemed like on the last video people responded well to it but you know i deal with situations like this all the time and so i just thought i'd throw that out there because that's what happened with this one the customer sat and told me how much he liked custom work versus just going and buying something and then trying to make it work for his situation he would much rather pay the extra money and have custom work done and then he's happier it you know it gives me business so i'm good with it and something like this i enjoy it as long as it's not as long as the customer's good to deal with i enjoy it you know tig welding aluminum something i i enjoy doing i am hoping to get a new tig welder someday it's on the list so that should be coming down the pipe so anyway that's our aluminum diamond plate dog box with a decoy rack on the top i hope you guys were able to learn something from this one i hope you were able to see something that i've done that will help you on a project you're working on i appreciate you guys watching if you like what you see like subscribe and share i also wanted to tell you guys by the time this next video rolls out it's going to be after thanksgiving so no matter where you're watching in the world I hope you guys have a safe, happy Thanksgiving. Be grateful for what you have. Be thankful for your blessings. Work hard. Do a good job. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. And then we're gonna pull, are you looking down here? Down here? They need to be able to see what I'm talking about. Whoa, that's way too close. Oh, goodness. You fry the drill bits and then you're into more drill bits with, that sounds terrible. But if, you, if all you're doing is, if all you're doing is, a, if all you're if all you're if all you're needing is a hole that you can run a bolt through and screw it in <coughs> that arm is going to drive look over here What is going on with this sh Why does it do that? Woo! Okay guys, here's what I got. <clears throat> my center pump. My center pump? I'm gonna take my center pop. <laughs>